If you've got a Honeywell EVA Home Central Heating System, occasionally you'll see errors appear on the screen. In this, this case, we've got one that says comms fault actuator. And you've got an, a name in the middle, which is the name of the zone. In this case, landing. So that's where the radiator is located. So if you're thinking like, what does this mean? Comms fault landing actuator. All it means is the system's unable to communicate with that particular thermostatic radiator valve or TRV. So what's probably happened is the batteries have gone flat and the batteries probably just need replacing. So it's nothing to worry about. It just means that there's no control over that zone at the moment. We'll just press the, the tick. And if we look at the zone, we can see we've got a little warning, a little triangle symbol, and there's no temperature being displayed. So it's a fair bet that that particular valve is currently offline. You just press on it, you get a repeat of the error, comms fault. So prior to this, you would have been getting low battery warnings for several days probably. Um, so all that's happened now is the batteries have finally given up. So here we are upstairs now on the landing. This is the TRV or the thermostatic radiator valve for the landing and you can see the display is completely blank. If I press the button, let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing. So this is obviously the reason why I was getting the comms fault on the panel downstairs. Uh, it just simply means the batteries need changing. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we need to do is remove the TRV. Now underneath there's a little clip. You put your finger on it, just slide it to the right. There you go, you hear it click. That means you can then lift the whole of the, the valve off. You can see like the display is completely blank. There's the there's the uh, the locking mechanism, just this little slider. Okay, so move it to the right and it unlocks it. So to get the batteries out, you'll see there's a little notch just there. You can actually get your fingernails in all the way under here and just pull it off like that. Okay, and you can see there's the two batteries. They are marked. You've got negative and positive. So that reminds you which way around they go. So all you need to do is just press on the little clip here to release the battery clip. There you go, you can see negative and positive. Just pull the two batteries out. Get your new batteries and put them back in the same way. Now just a quick note about batteries. I use Duracells. Uh, try and use a decent brand like Duracells or Energizer because you don't want them to leak. Now, if you use a cheap brand from Lidl or Aldi, um, there is a possibility that those might leak over time. These batteries have to stay in here for about a year or two. That's how long they last. So the last thing you want is for them to leak. So you see there, I just put the, the clip back on, just in case of clipping back, back on. And then you can see straight away, the display is now on and it's gonna start synchronizing with the panel downstairs. So next thing to do, we need to do is just put the lid back on. So just line it up and it just clicks back into place. Okay. You can see it saying sync. So it's actually starting to synchronize now. So it's going to get all its information from the panel. So to put it back, uh, what you need to do is this valve wheel, you need to open it. Make sure it's open all the way. So that means the valve is open now. And then you just drop the TRV back on top until it clicks into place. You can move it slightly like this, depending on how you want the display. I want the display straight out like that. And then you just got to lock it by moving that, that locking slider thing to the left. There we go. Now it's on. And we just have to wait. And what will happen is the valve will close. It will, it will come up with a, a word on here saying cycling. And then you'll hear the motor spin up and what it will do is it will turn the motor, close the valve, and it's so it, it's working out the how much resistance it needs. It's measuring how far it has to drive the motor to close the valve. Um, you can see the temperature at the moment is 24.5. So it's actually quite warm. So what will probably happen is it probably won't reopen the valve. It will just stay shut once it's finished cycling. And just press the button and you can see it comes up with the name of the zone, the Wi-Fi signal, and a little battery indicator. We just have to wait now, wait for it to cycle and then it'll be ready. There we go, you can see it's cycling now and if you listen carefully, you can actually hear the motor.
There we go, and it's finished. Back downstairs on the Honeywell panel now, you can see that the, the zone has now come back up on the panel. It's showing us the current temperature, 24 and a half. The little red symbol's gone. Um, before it wasn't actually showing the temperature, so uh, we're not getting any errors now. If we click on it, there we go. I don't get the error come up anymore when I click on it. So all's good. Uh, just keep some batteries spare available for the next one that fails, because these batteries tend to last between between a year and 18 months. You might get two years out of them if you're lucky. So it's always always good to have some spare.